Hi, Annette Pearson here from Warnersville, Pennsylvania at www.nettypeacestamping.com. I have a few new things to talk about first. The new holiday catalog is out and available and live for you to buy your Christmas stamps so you can start making your Christmas cards. And if you're not quite into Christmas yet, but you're one of those pumpkin spice everything people, well, there are some really nice fall things in this book. Some really pretty pumpkin spicy sort of things. And if that's not your thing, Halloween, there's some Halloween stuff in here. Trick or treat stuff. Whole magic in the night sweet. So that's out there. If you don't have one of these, and you would like one, let me know. My email address is nettyp2020 at gmail.com. That's N-E-T-T-E-P 2020 at gmail.com. Send me an email. Send me an email with your address, and I will be sure that you get one as soon as possible. If you go to place an order in the next couple of days, or even just to look around our website, you're going to notice that everything has changed. Yes, Stampin' Up! started a new platform, and it's very pretty. Um, it gets a lot of very pretty pictures, pretty details um, of, this, of the products that we have for sale. It's different because it's new, and so it takes a little bit of getting used to. And I'll tell you to make sure that if you place an order on online, Make sure that you get me in as your demonstrator. I do appreciate your business. I appreciate your orders. I really appreciate you making sure that it's me that you're actually getting. Um, because they it they used to it used to save all that stuff. Just like your your username and password may not be in there. You may have to create a new password, or you may need to get a link to a new password or something. Um, because it's not remembering everything like that from your old account. So you might have to reselect your demonstrator. So make sure you select me. Um, also, while you're on my website, if you look up to your right, there's a thing that says follow me with email. Please put your email in there. Um, that will notify you whenever I put something new on my website. And it lets me know that you're watching what I'm doing. And I do appreciate knowing that people are watching. Uh, and I put your name every month, everyone who follows. I put your name in a bucket and I pull one of them and you win a prize. Lori's our prize winner this month. And she will be hearing from me in the next couple of days about her prize. So what I'm going to show you today, I'm, I'm abbreviating this because I want to show you some techniques more so than anything else. I am going to have a, some finished cards to show you, but I want to show you this technique. Um, this is using the Prized Peony Suite, which includes these stamps, Prized Peony. I love peonies. They are just my favorite. I never did know if you pronounce them peonies or peonies. My mom always said peonies, peony bush. <laughs> okay, so I just assumed that's what they're called, peonies. Okay, as opposed to peonies. So these are the dies, and there's some more dies here. So there's a bunch of dies that come with this set. Part of the dies are to punch out the stamps. So when you are stamping, you can use these dies to punch out what you've stamped. And then the other ones are to make a peony. And this makes a little border. This is really cool. It embosses and it cuts. So it cuts your scallops, but then it embosses a little ribbon thing. And I used it on one of these cards. You see this down at the bottom here? 
Uh, you can't see the design so good because I used printed paper, but you can see the effect. It's, it's pretty neat. And these are your pieces for your peony. Now, the reason I'm showing you this is because they don't, it took me a while to figure this out. So I want to show it to you so that you don't have quite the grief that I had trying to figure it out. Okay, what you're going to do is you're going to cut four pieces for your peony. It's these four pieces. One, two, three, four. Line them up, big to little. And then you're going to use two pieces, actually, for your leaf. This and this. And I've already glued these together. A dark one using mossy meadow and a light one using old olive this one i used the i did it the opposite okay but same difference and then you're also going to have a stamen out of a yellow and i i did some out of mango melody and some out of daffodil delight either one they're pretty and these i cut some out of um very vanilla and i cut some out of the whisper white <clears throat> Now what I'm doing to make these look so pretty, I take a dauber. You can either use a sponge dauber or a piece of sponge. Now, these are the Stampin' Sponges. They come, they're round like this. I cut them up into dozens of pieces. I guess like I cut this up about eight times or more. And so I, I do use these a lot, but I mean, you can rinse them out when you, like they, this has gotten pretty goopy but it's stained, it's not, there's not ink in it. I rinse it out in water and reuse it. And the sponge dauber, you just use as it is. Um, dip it in your ink and I'm gonna sponge on this, this peony, especially around this little slit. And this is one of the tips that I wanna show you because you can get so much mileage out of this sponging techniques. Um, you can use this in so many different ways and it looks so pretty, the different ways you use it. Now, when I do a sentiment, a greeting, a lot of times I will just do the edges, just like this, just to make it stand out. And it, it's amazing how it stands out against your background. I'll give you an example. I did it on this one, right around the edges here. You can see, it makes it just stick out above everything else. And now I want to get a little bit on the on the paper and make it just give it that pinky stained look. And I'll do this to all four of these. I just wasn't in the mood to start with Christmas stuff yet. I got a, a lot of people are starting with that already, but I just wasn't there yet. So I thought I would do this. Oh, and the um, stamp and emboss, stamp and cut and emboss machine. That was new in the, ca the annual catalog and um, it wasn't available. Well, it's going to be available September 1st and it is available to demonstrators right now. So I ordered mine and I haven't gotten it yet, but when I get it, I'm gonna be sure to do a demonstration with it online so you can see how it looks, see how it works. And I'll be taking it with me if I ever get to an online demonstration again. <laughs> I sure do miss you guys. I miss seeing everybody in person and getting out there and doing stuff. I hope, hopefully this gets under control and we can get back to normal things. Meanwhile, if anybody's interested, 
I will do a virtual party very much just like what we're doing here, except I'll do it over Zoom. And then everybody has some input. We can all talk and chat while we're working and spend some time together. And uh, what I was going to do for those is make up some kits ahead of time for whatever I'm doing in the class. And you buy the kit and then we can do it together online. And then the kit gets just gets taken off your order if you order something at the party. And of course, there's a hostess and the hostess gets credit for your orders. So it would be just done just like a party. Okay, so now I have done these pieces. We start with the smallest one and we put glue dots, two, two glue dots on it, and I'm going to show you why. Because when you stick it down, you stick it down in this little slot, and you will notice that these pieces line up. There's a little hump coming out here and here, and the pieces line up right there. And all four pieces line up just like that. So we take two glue dots and we will stick them together. I this it's so, it's so funny because I when I first spotted them I thought, "Oh my gosh, they're so pretty. I just love pennies. I they're so so beautiful." And I've got bunches and bunches of them in my yard and I just love them. And they look so complicated. I thought, oh my gosh, and you know, they're really quite easy, which just shocked me. They they look a whole lot worse than they are, that's for sure. So once you get all four of them together, there you go. You take your little stamen here and put a glue dot on it. And stick it in the top one. And I never do this first, and I always think I should, but then I, because I just don't get the right placement if I try to do it first. I want to really tuck down in there. And you have a tendency to not tuck it far enough. So this one got a little deeper in color at some spots, so I'm going to touch it up a little bit. But, I mean, you can really, you, you can't mess these up. They end up coming out so nice. And I also want the bottom to be a little more, to have a little more pizzazz to it. Okay, and then you can stick a leaf to it if you want. Now I'm going to show you what I've done with the two that I made so far. I'm not making another card. I'm trying to get these done quick, this video done quickly. So this was the one card I cut DSP four by five and a quarter. And then this piece is two by four and a quarter. Use the banners pick a punch to flag this sentiment on the happy birthday and um, here is your penny stamp the elegant faceted gems are so pretty I put those on and last but not least vellum square vellum doilies are also in the annual catalog. I took one of them, I cut the corner off of it. I put it down, I dabbed the ink on it to make it pinky, and just put the corner right up there. Just to, just to give it a little bit of extra zap. And I took a piece of the Design Who Series paper. First I took a gray, it's gray granite, uh, four by five and a quarter. I cut a piece of 
two pieces actually one gray and one pink three and three quarters by four and then I stuck the square with the corners in the gutter of the trimmer and to show you what I mean I stuck the corners one here and one here so basically me let's see if I can find a scrap okay like there and there and then cut it like that okay so then I ended up with one of each and I put one here and one here on top of the gray leaving the center open and I took shimmer ribbon that also is part of the suite isn't that pretty gray granite it is and I glued that on here to glue that on this was a little trick that I really think you need to know silicone mat these are in the catalog and they are something if you don't have one you need it believe me they will save you so much grief it's called a silicone craft sheet and it is I'm looking for it right now it is six dollars okay it protects your work surface like I always work on paper well when you go to glue something and you run off of the paper and it gets on this and then whatever you're putting here is sticking and that drives me crazy so I use the craft sheet <coughs> excuse me put the ribbon down run this over it and whatever misses the ribbon is stuck to this to clean this off you just let the glue dry and then wipe it with your finger and it comes right off i dab a dab a glue on here uh, when i'm gluing things like these leaves um there's a little piece here that has to get glued on well if you don't want to get glue all over the place dab a little bit of glue on here take a toothpick and put it on you put little dots on your piece and then put it down and you won't get glue all over the place so that's one of my tips really you really really should have one of these you won't regret it um so that's all i have for today is just wanted to just show you this shading technique and how pretty it can make your cards even if you do not have the peony i'm sure sooner or later you might have the um the poppies or any other kind of florals that are dyes, that are die cut, that shading works so nicely for them. And even around your little flags for your sentiments. Okay. Well, that's it until next time. Happy stamping and thanks for watching. Don't forget, follow me with email. Bye.